Okay, welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. You guys know this is a Dan Abrams production, and you know that this is gavel to gavel coverage on multiple trials. Okay, so former police officer Todd Herb uh, testifying about a violent encounter that he had with the defendant, part of the aggravating factors. But guys, drum roll, please. You know, Professor Latoni, I told you all, I don't just got two of the eight plus panels. I actually got number three, and I believe it was Kit in the chat room. You got it right. It is the inestimable, unbelievable trial force, 30 years at the DOJ, trained over a thousand prosecutors, over a hundred trials. They got a war room named after him at DOJ, the Rossi War Room, and he loves Polenta. Gene Rossi, how are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and i love calling you intrepid <laughs> you got to check out the tweets you got rossi 4 va and you got our bianca esq to see our polite banter that goes back and forth and gene you're always a, a big fan and i really appreciate it great having you on with these two other awesome guests gene i know you just came on but um i, I just want to throw something at you we talk about lawyering all the time you and me when we're just us for a very long time here on the network this defense lawyer in the markeith lloyd case is really amazing he's doing a phenomenal job and i just like to get your opinion. We talked to uh, the professor and Latoni about um, the disparate kind of verdicts that could occur, some of which occur as a result of the lawyering that happens in a case. In this particular death penalty case, he is doing a phenomenal opening statement, talking a lot about the background, the mental health history. He has objective psychiatric testing that the state gene does not have. Their psychologist is only on interviews, not on any psychiatric testing like the MMPI. Uh, so I, I, I I want to get your opinion about the disparity that can happen with lawyering and the effect it can have on the ultimate outcome of a trial. I can give you a good example. I teach a constitutional law class with a phenomenal judge, Jim Clark of Alexander, Virginia. He was a defense attorney for 30 years, and I saw him do a, an opening statement in the death penalty phase of an MS-13 gang member, and he got life imprisonment. And there's no doubt in my mind that his lawyering in the penalty phase saved that person's life. It can make a huge difference. And the reason is, if the defense attorney doesn't care or show emotion towards their client, especially in the death penalty phase, then the jurors don't care. So it does make a huge difference. All right, well, I see you got a new backdrop there. Big shot, I like it, it looks good. Uh, Professor, we were talking a little bit about this before. Um, the prosecutorial philosophy, I once tried a case where I never thought I'd get a conviction on the top count. And I told that to the jury. I said, you, you, there's, there's very little chance that you, but here's the reasons why we filed the charge and we believe there's enough evidence. But the rest of the indictment, he should be found guilty of. I kind of tossed the charge away, hoping they'd convict him of something. They came back within 15 minutes and convicted the defense of everything but I'm gonna tell you where good prosecutors do things the right way and I'm, I'm curious of your opinion sure. I went down to my boss and I told my boss that I felt that that conviction of the highest charge was an unfair conviction and his answer to me too sweet without any hesitation I love this man he said Bob our job is to do the right thing as prosecutors to seek justice and if you're uncomfortable with it move to dismiss that count of the jury count and sentence him what you believe is appropriate with regard to the rest of the case and the judge actually thanked me for doing it because the judge had concerns as well. So that kind of gets to the idea of how things could really be different by the lawyering in the case. Absolutely, and I couldn't agree more. You know, the goal of a defense attorney, broadly speaking, the goal of a prosecutor is somewhat different. The goal of the defense attorney to provide the best defense for his or her client, period. Not to get the person off, to provide the best defense. The role of the prosecutor is to seek justice and truth wherever where it may lead. That certainly the prosecutor represents the people. However, it's about truth and justice. Perfect example of what you just said. Prosecutor feels this person should not be convicted for a particular crime and form the judge. Right. Well, Latoni, I mean, this is this is big. This is big world stuff we're talking about here. And I couldn't have three better people than you guys. Latonia, I mean, to the professor's point, when we swear an oath as prosecutors, we do swear an oath to seek justice, not merely seek convictions. But that means different things to different people, even within the same agency. Have you ever found yourself involved in a situation where you went kind of gung-ho in the beginning of it, but then as the case kind of started to change, you started to have doubts and defaulted to the idea that, you know what, like my boss used to say, there'll always be another defendant, there'll always be another crime, let's not make a mistake. Yes, without a doubt, as a prosecutor, you have to seek justice and you also need to be concerned about your own reputation. 
And so if there have been times when you're in the middle of a case and you say to yourself, you know what, this isn't going the way that I originally thought, or maybe that there needs to be some other type of consideration. And you have a duty, at least in my opinion, you have a duty that if you think that the charge needs to be dismissed or reduced or something else needs to be done with the case, then you need to do that. Um, that's one of those ethical things. And also it might be a moral thing as well, uh, no matter what type of attorney that you are, that you do the right thing. Because there are times as a prosecutor, you may see that a defense attorney is not doing the best job by way of their client. You're not meant to be the defense attorney, but you recognize that if this person had a competent attorney, then certain things wouldn't be happening or they would be requesting certain things. And sometimes you may have to step in on some levels and make sure that justice is done correctly. Well stated by all of you. Unfortunately, in my defense career, I have seen situations in which prosecutors did not necessarily act with that level of uh, competency as far as I am concerned, and that is always regrettable, but there are many, many that do, uh, and, and you guys are examples of that. So State versus Jimmy Rogers, folks, you know we've been covering that gavel to gavel. Um, this, essentially, this case is where uh, Mark Seavers hired a childhood friend, Curtis Wayne Wright, to kill his wife, and Wright assist, uh, enlisted the help of Jimmy Rogers, a little bit like one of those logical questions that you have to try to break down there. So it's Seavers to Wright, from Wright to Rogers. Rogers. And so Wright had struck a deal with prosecutors. You see him there on the screen, and he was willing for decades in prison to cooperate and did, in fact, testify in this particular case. Mark Seaver's trial is scheduled for later on. Uh, right now, we are told that court is coming back in session, and we're going to be having closing arguments. The defense, from what I understand, did not put a case on in this particular case. Okay, prosecution's closing statement in the Jimmy Rogers case. We're going to take a quick break some business here at the Lone Crime Network. We'll be right back.